Hello, my name is David Johnson and welcome to the Art of Covid chat. We're talking with artists who work in the Fens region about the work and the challenges they face during the pandemic of 2020 and 21. Today we have an artist from the Fenland area and one from the Cambridge area. Uh, please welcome Sally Rose and Michelle Brace. Hello. Hi there. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, today Pleasure. Today's artists have a background of music and spoken word. So we are going to look at the use of music and spoken word as part of art and art forms. So Sally, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Thank you very much, David. Well, I'm Sally Rose and um, I live in the March town in Cambridgeshire um, and I am mainly a singer but I'm also a music leader so what does that mean well it means that um, obviously I sing but I like to go out into the community and help support people to find their voices and um, I help uh, people who have uh, degenerative diseases such as Parkinson's um, keep their voices through voice therapy and uh, on the side is if I haven't got enough to do I like to run a ukulele club as well so um, all in, a, in and around March, Peterborough, Ely, that sort of place. Mm-hmm. Um, my current projects, well, the March Can't Sing Choir, which uh, is like Ron Seal does the job on the tin. Um, we have um, lots and lots of people who enjoy coming together who sing and maybe who haven't been fond of singing before. They've been told they can't sing or they're useless at singing. So we all get together and we make a wonderful noise when we're all together and uh, we just get going and have great fun and have a good laugh. And so we've been sort of like keeping that simmering in the background for the past year. Um, But I'm also involved with other projects. I've mentioned the Parkinson's uh, that I do Zooms for since the last year. Before that, it was face to face. Um, But I'm also getting more involved with more artistic and creative things through Marketplace. Um, And I'm hoping to be part of something very, very exciting, which I don't think Fenland will ever recover from or is ever going to see anything like it again. But I hope it comes along and uh, I hope I'm going to be part of the soundscape for that. My artistic influences, well, it goes all the way back to my dad pub thumping on the piano. He couldn't read music, but he always belted out a good tune. And then my brother got into pop music at the time, coming up in the 70s. And I think the first thing I can remember is Blue Oyster Cult, so guitar music, very much influenced through the, everything we did at school. So singing in the, in the choirs at school, so some classical stuff, some secular stuff there. And all the way through the 70s, all that lovely glam rock. I personally love the songs of the American Songbook. And, but more recently, I've sort of like been getting into the stillness and quietness of things. And I've been coming back around to classical music and really enjoying things like um, Do Not Be Afraid and stuff like that, which is uh, quite, a, quite a heavy thing, really. But it's a magnificent thing to listen to. So choral music, a big, big influence of me. Um, but I do love a good song. So... As long as it's got a nice melody and fantastic words, then I'm into it. So Adele, and I'm a bit eclectic, really. I like Coldplay, Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, Mozart, Beethoven, oh, you know what I mean. A bit, of, a, 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 a bit of a mix, that's me. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, there's a few on my list on there as well. <laughs> Michelle, a little bit about okay. yourself as well. Yeah, my name is Michelle Brace. I would describe myself as a digital artist. And most of the work that I'm currently doing is digital. I'm also a VJ. So that's kind of my hobby or my you know passion thing. I collaborate with friends and make uh, visuals in live, in real time. So currently I'm working with a couple of groups in Ipswich. I've been working with adults to support their mental health and well-being and working via Zoom and again, working working visually, but doing all kinds of creative activities, which result in some kind of visual output and then using those in um, a digital mix. So mixing together images and layering images and making something beautiful. But also I feel that the 
the point of the sessions, uh, one of the sessions is called Mindful Making. So the point of the sessions is really to get people into the creative zone, immersed in it. And the theory being that while you're in that place, your your kind of worries, your anxieties, your thoughts about the future, the past, they kind of melt away and you're in this lovely creative space where we're we're all working together and we're connected and we're we're doing we're doing something creative so it's much less about the you know the end product and much more about the the process and the experience so that's what I've been involved with recently so yeah as well as a digital artist I will also describe myself as creative producer of projects and events um obviously real world events have been much less well, pretty much invisible over the last year. So uh, making the best of that situation. Who are your influencers, Jonna? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, sp- I thought about that. I mean, I think likewise, I'm really influenced by or, or I connect with popular culture, you know, th- the imagery of it and, and you know, the music, for instance, I've been following a collective of artists called Brain Feeder because they do a lot of broadcasting on Twitch and it's always visually really interesting. But also I would say I was going to mention Imogen Heat because I really f- follow what she does. I think she's really one of those artists that's complete completely at the leading edge and she's always experimenting with technology um and pushing it into new areas so i've seen some of her work in vr uh, she's at the moment working through this network called mycelia which is a worldwide thing to um, establish creative passports for artists so that um, i think you know this kind of thinking is going to revolutionize the way we as artists do business so it's going to be much more that we're in control of our creative outputs and are able to kind of trade much more directly and, you know, much more valued as artists in our work. So, you know, I've been really following with great interest what she's been up to. And I also love, was hugely inspired by her Mimu gloves. What it, what it means is tech that's, um, she wears wearable technology, which enables her to move around the stage to perform in 3D space her music. So she she put it that digital musicians are quite often very boring to watch. I mean, she said they're sitting at their laptops and could be writing emails, you know, could be, you know, there's nothing to see there really. So she's turned it into a performative sort of three dimensional thing. And it's very expressive and beautiful. So I really love that. So when it comes across is that when I first sort of heard about you, that sort of quite separate disciplines, uh, but listening to your your background, yeah. there are sort of a very, quite a, a common set of threads mm-hmm. between the two of you. And certainly music and the use of music through mental health, that's something that you seem to both be involved or currently part of your your, your um involvement with art has has involved that kind of help and support and I'll, I'll, I'll take just, a bit more about that sort of how how you both sort of work with that i was gonna say my i i think my my working life has always had a community focus whether that's community development or you know um music projects with young people those those kind of things it feels like the responsibility of artists in these present conditions, it feels like there is such great need in the community for connection, for support, for, you know, uh, understanding between people. And, you know, that, that, you know, if there are things that we can do to support mental health and well-being, then it feels like that's a space that art in, artists can move into. It's almost like that's something we need to be doing, thinking about how we can apply our practice for the good of people and society yeah i I totally agree with that um but for for me personally i just know how music makes me feel if if i listen to certain pieces of music it can i can be in floods and floods of tears but i know that if i put something else on like whole lot of rosy acdc i'd be boom it'll just give me so much energy and and it'll just poof, my mood will spring back to life. I think the thing about music is that it's quite um, it, it it is healing when you listen to it if you can access it and listen to it. But actually doing it and being part of it is 
it puts a lot of people off because uh, they can't play instruments. Um, they, as I've said before, with the choir, they think that they can't sing. And, and I just would like people to just go back and back and back and think about people who don't have access to technology or to instruments and and they manage to make the most fantastic sounds from their voices from bits of wood or, or great big coconut husks that they found and it just brings people together and if you've ever 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 had the pleasure of being surrounded uh, right in the middle and I mean really close so obviously can't be done at the moment but just surrounded by voices all singing you can actually feel the sound waves it's a physical thing you can feel it going through your body and if you sing properly if you watch an opera singer um, sing they are using all of their body all of their muscles you know they the, the, the way they stand and hold you can see their lungs going in and out like this from the or the sideways like like a bellows and you don't actually realize what what a physical thing it is so it it just is just so beneficial and and it can release all your endorphins that you like that you get from chocolate and you still don't put on any calories so what what more what more could it be just chocolate without the calories it, it, it is a really 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 powerful thing and um I, I just wish that I could get across how I feel about it and 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 how I know that it can be benefit and, and for mental health and, and bringing people together is just it's just nothing like it for me I think um, I, I when when you were saying you don't necessarily need technology to be able to enjoy music mm. and your voice. I mean, I think that's been my approach as well with the sessions I've been running, trying to minimise barriers to entry. So saying, yes. you know, if you've only got a pencil and a piece of paper, then that's fine. We can work with that. You know, uh, mm. maybe a pair of scissors would be useful. Just pointing out that we can be. We can be creative and expressive without having all of the latest tech gear. You know, we can still make something. And um, I think that's what's really important. Yes, uh, it, it, it often. Yes, you can you can do it. But how how much more would it would 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 my experience be if if I could access tech and things the, the way that um, I want to? There's uh, I know there's a. Um, uh, boy well I don't he seems like a boy or he seems like about 10 but I think he's probably about 19 something like that a bit older I don't even know if he's 20 yet he could be Jacob Collier and and he the, the looping pedals every, the, the things that he can do he's got midi files and all these things and the sounds that he creates I mean he's also a very experienced um, player he plays um, he's a multi-instrumentalist as well so he can put everything down and, and, and lay it down and start and stop it when he wants and change it and on all these things and I'm thinking how fantastic would that be so cool you could so in in a way you don't really need and I to know about music just to make a sound and I don't even think that I know there are programs that you you don't need to be able to read music or write music so that then you can write your music it'll write it for you so that then it could be passed on to other people to do with with what they want but um, there's just so many branches of it now. The, 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 you've still got the country music, the folk music. They're still very traditional and things like that. And and all the different cultures now that are that are within Finland. I I don't hear I I don't hear the folk songs, but I know um, that traditional folk songs in in the Eastern European very 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 strong culture there but it, it hasn't it hasn't come through into the mainstream yet here in Finland but there's there's so many so many many and, and you think I can I remember I went to a wedding a few years back a Scottish person married an Indian person and so part of the reception was they had a Highland bagpipers with a with the Indian Bangra drums. My God, it was it was just like wow. I was I was away. I didn't know whether to turn on a light bulb or, or whether to dig the soil or or whether to get out my kilt and you know do the Highland fling. But the the Marian and that, so there's there's just endless possibilities which are still still to be discovered. And people people whose minds will think creatively or outside the box will be able to marry all these two all these together. And uh, it's just it's just a wonderful thing. Music. Yeah, you talk about the the music. I was up 
in Spalding a couple of years ago for the, the BBC Folk Festival Awards, a live broadcast from, well, this time it was from Spalding, but it was all the, the folk festival, uh, folk music from, from the Fenlands. And it was, it was really nice to see mm. surprisingly young people who were actually on stage yeah. and they were, there was about 10 bands and each, you know, they were all singing either Lincolnshire based Fen songs or um, further south into Cambridgeshire based Fen songs. Mm-hmm. So there's definitely, I say market, but there's definitely a vibe of um, Fen music and it is beginning to sort of become more mainstream. And it's good that the BBC are, are sort of helping to promote that. Mm. Yeah, I hear, what you're saying, I hear what you're saying, Sally, though, about the um, more diverse communities in the Fenlands and hearing those sounds. I think that would be really interesting to hear some of that coming through. Yeah, I, I would like to hear it. I, I really would. I, I think it's just a way to bring the communities together as well and to appreciate each other more. Exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. that understanding cultures i think that music's a really good way in isn't it yeah well let's let's just um move away i mean we've, we've talked about music from the, the minimalistic side of it i know that michelle you're quite heavily involved in sort of the, the tech side of it um with the, the vjing what does vj stand for that, that's what, sort of like, well, I kind of got an idea but do you want to sort of go into a bit more detail yeah sure i mean it's something that's it's um i, I would say it's an art form that uh runs alongside DJing so that hence the name it's like the the visual equivalent of DJing so you can perform live with visuals um, that's essentially what it is in terms of the relation to the technology obviously you do need tech tools to do VJing and I I use a particular program called Resolume, which is a absolutely incredible tool and really opens up what is possible. There's so many variables within that. So a bit like the equivalent of the the loop pedal, you know, you can make all kinds of, you know, derivatives of that image uh, and on and on it goes, you know. But um for me, the the important thing is the the content and the idea and the the visual imagery that people can relate to, hopefully. So I think um, in my view, there's um, a really sort of tech tech heavy end of it visually. But what I like and what I enjoy is, for instance, using nature as a source of content or people or dancing or movement. Uh, I'm really into kind of textures and colors and making beautiful compositions that move. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's how I've been using it. So it's like, um, adapting a tool to express something, you know, that's where my focus is. So even, you know, I, I'm interested in visual arts, uh, that are not just tech. So then it's the art and the meaning and the idea that carries forward, you know, that, that is there to communicate with people. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do where I'm get, trying to get to anyway with my work. So it sounds amazing to be able to do that. I mean, I didn't even, probably didn't <laughs> right outside my my train of thought that, but um, yeah, so you're probably- taking images and making them move well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you probably have, you probably have seen it, like big, big gigs uh, usually have a visual backdrop these days. Ah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And quite yeah. often it's very, you know, that it might involve live cameras or it might involve, uh, you know, a band logo or something like that. Uh-huh. Uh, okay, and yeah, it I might involve it. an artist who's mixing in images, telling a bit of a story that goes with the Yes, the yeah, I've seen I've, 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 I've seen it, but just to think, just to bring it, but that to me is like separate, to, you know, it's on something which is uh, for big people, not for little people like uh-huh. us, <laughs> like what I would be. I would be a little personal at, at, at this, the starting off, but wow. Would I, would I be right in saying that this was quite a big thing in the 90s? before the sort of the music videos came about. So a lot of the dance dance bands, I think it was like Mars and and some of them were using an awful lot of visual represent imagery and patterns and things for, for when they were doing festivals and, and DJ and stuff, which then evolved obviously into, into the, um, the style of videos that we have now. Would that be right? Oh yeah, I think so. I think there was a lot of experimentation, wasn't there, with uh, electronic music and 
visuals. That's completely right. And artists like Cold Cut are really known for actually evol- evolving some of the technology to in- enable visual performance as well as, you know, electronic music performance. And they have evolved side by side, really. Yeah, that they, they do go hand in hand. Um, but I like, you know, thinking about it in other ways. You know, how else can we use this? What, how else might we be able to interact with it? How else might you be able to kind of get involved, um, get involved with the visuals in some way? So they're the kind of things I'm looking at. You using tech in any ways or are you still traditional? Oh, quite, quite traditional. I, I, I'm not a tech phobic, but I'm not very, very au fait with it, if you know, if you know what I mean. I think it, it scares me a little bit. You know, I, I'm just even thinking of using a little bit of a green screen behind us, you know, and <laughs> just putting something on that. The tech side of the, of the music, though, it's, I mean, it, Obviously, we've been having to do things this last year through through Zoom, um, trying to um, reach out to people through Zoom. And it hasn't really worked for the choir, the March Can't Sing Choir. I think uh, quite a, a few of them are the, of the older generation. And so they, 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 like me, are a little bit nervous about using tech and things. The Parkinson's groups, which I have done Zooms for, it's it, it's great um, to see everybody. So we, we've had uh, had one recently and there was quite a few people who turned up. But um, of course, I, I can't hear them. And, and so I can't, it, uh, for me, I, I don't get any interaction. And, and that's a big part of things for me. And as a performer, singing and, and recording or doing a live via the internet, you're here, you're just standing there on, on your own. You don't really know if there's anybody paying any attention at the other end. And and so it's I find it a little bit soul destroying. I know other people have really, really embraced it. And I've been part of um, a big collaboration in, in Peterborough. And we've just um, done a, a big choir for a, a new production, which is coming out at the Lamp House Theatre. Um, so we've all recorded our parts and it's been all put together. And I mean, when you hear it and, and look at it, 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 it looks wonderful. But when you're actually doing it at the time, it's a bit, mm, I don't know how that was. Or, mm, you know, I, I think I could have done that a bit better or, or whatever. So it, it's um, I've had uh, quite mixed feelings. I mean, I, I know it's enabled choirs and people to stay reconnected in some way, but it, it's just not the same for me. It's just not the same being there and feeling it and doing it. And you sort of like raise your game a bit when you're with other people and you, you know, you, you, you try that bit harder, I think, or you, you react to the next piece, the people who are around you. So it's, um, it, it has been very strange. So, yeah. but I mean, I, I would just love to get MIDI files and just ooh, do all those sounds all together and, and reverse it and loop it and, Oh, the endless possibilities with that. Just, just, just let me out there. What I go do is save up my pennies. <laughs> like, buy yeah, some it does, tech. does get expensive, doesn't it? <laughs> you were saying, Sally, that you, um, you really value the the feedback that you get when you're in in the room with people, and that you can um, respond and react to them in that way. But I was thinking that the tech, you know, in some way, well, well, re- really more so the lockdown over the last year, in some ways, it's it's not changed my way of working. You know, I'm, I'm still a freelance artist. I still mostly work from home, you know, from my shed, from my studio. But on the other hand, it, it has enabled some things like you're saying you were, you were able to work remotely and put together a piece of music, uh, yeah. which in the end was a lovely thing. Uh, and for me as well, you know, there was a project which I'd been thinking of for years, you know, for, for a long time, I'm thinking, yeah, it'd be really good to do that. But in my mind, it was about going individually into people's homes and talking to them and capturing stories. And actually then through lockdown and suddenly we were all on Zoom, it occurred to me that I could do that project much more easily. So a situation a bit like this, recording 
people in the room and their stories connected to particular objects. And that, you know, that's the particular piece of work that I did with Marketplace mm-hmm. was around, um, we made a digital mantelpiece out of people's objects and the stories associated with them. And that was a really, really lovely thing. So um, oh, that sounds lovely. It does sound I, lovely. I have yeah. to interject and say that I was part of that. Uh, yes, <laughs> yeah, David was. And that was great. You know, it's a, it was a really nice way of telling quite a personal story, but um, through an object and, you know, maybe bringing a group of people a little bit closer together, you know, uh, enabling them to find out something about each other that they didn't previously know. And, you know, just as a trigger for those conversations. So, you know, that that for me was a, a big plus, you know, it meant that that project yeah. was was realized and not just this, like, how do I do this? Like, how, how do I actually find these people or have these conversations? So, so yeah, yeah, it's, I think it's uh, it, it, it's been it's been good that uh, it's been able to keep people together, really. As much as we could carry on talking for for hours and hours, and I think this probably would be, we may have to have a, another another podcast later on. But just sort of to wrap up the main things before we we come to an end, we want to do a challenge, and uh, with each group of artists that we've had on the show so far we've asked them to come up with a challenge to try and encourage encourage the listeners to uh, to get creative and, and to get involved in some of the things that we're actually talking about sally would you like to give us a challenge or something you can inspire the the listeners oh, well it's just a very very simple thing um just like you to go out somewhere quiet if you can find and uh, just want you to walk walk at your own pace and I want you to try and connect with that pace and just think of little rhymes that you can talk either in your head or out loud as you're walking past just to just to feel the rhythm and of, of your feet and the rhythm of the music going through your mouth and it'll just come like a little like a little song whatever you make up it doesn't matter whether then you make up nonsense words but just try and and fit in and it it's that you may find that if you're walking at the right pace it'll slow your heartbeat you'll be more aware of your breathing and it's just all part of of being a sort of like a little musical process and and also listening to what's going on and the different pitches and the sounds that your feet are making and the, the teeth and the and and uh, your tongue and things like that. So it's just a little tiny mini challenge. You don't have to do any music. You don't have to do any singing. Just be aware of what's going on and enjoy the rhythm of your life at that particular moment in time. Yeah, I thought I'd set a little digital challenge. So uh, if you if you have a if you have a smartphone or you know um, uh, in your web browser, you can find an app called Photoshop Mix. And I thought it might be really nice to have a go at mixing a couple of different images. This is this is what I do in my practice as, as a VJ with layers and textures and colors so look for look for patterns and textures and look for something that catches your attention and take a photograph of it and have a go at putting those two photographs together uh, and it with a an app like photoshop mix it en- enables you to play with different blending tools uh, between two images it's quite easy to use and fun to explore um, if you don't have access to something like that then how about take a couple of pictures print them out and then uh, actually have a go at collaging them together uh, that's equally fun I think so yeah that would be my challenge a bit of a collage mix layering exercise Excellent. That's good. So something for everyone. Definitely. <laughs> the last bit is uh, to, uh, something to take away. We do because obviously we're trying to encourage art in, in the Felland and surrounding areas. Is there something that you can share with the the listeners, something that they can take away, some advice, an idea, inspiration, where they can maybe start if this is something they've never done before? Yeah, I mean, it would. it's not really a specific thing. It's more of a kind of big thing, which is, um, you know, I think through this pandemic, we've realised that life is short, you know, uh, do what you love, do something that inspires or excites you and, and try and make time for that thing. Find a way to express yourself and communicate with your fellow humans, you know, so whether that's 
through conversations or by making something, singing something, you know, writing a little song or, uh, you know, making some visual art, then, um, yeah, just do it. Don't hang around. Don't wait for tomorrow. Uh, do that, do that thing now, do a little dance right now. <laughs> well, I'd like people to go back as far as they can remember to the pieces that they, they they first remember, the pieces of music, it doesn't matter what it is. And just make sure that you've got them somewhere that, uh, I mean, the, my cassettes have gone, my records have gone, but now I'm refinding them down on, on, on um, digital music, on digital platforms, and just have a listen. And if they make you cry, just cry. Just, just, just go with it. Um, and... I'm sure the songs that you've maybe choose about maybe at half a dozen and uh, see what ranges of emotions will bring you. But but don't forget them because pieces of music that you remember are there for a reason. And just don't be afraid to to re-listen to them all and uh, make sure you've got them handy for when you need them. Yes, I mean, there's, uh, there's definitely an association between music and, and memories. I, I, I guess you, you know that you play music and it will evoke a, a memory or of a place mm. or a person. I think, yeah. So you, you never know what you're going to, to remember when you when you start listening to these pieces again. Definitely. And as you okay, say, so, connects with emotion, doesn't it? So yeah. I, I can remember when I was a when I was a girl, we had a next door neighbour and uh, she was quite old, lived on herself by herself. Her, her, her husband had died. And I always used to be singing and playing music. And the one day she came around with a five pound note, the, 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 prop, the proper ones, not the plastic ones. And she said, go and buy something. She said, go and buy some music. She said, I just, I just love it. Listening to the music, listening to you singing. So when I ever I play ELO, because um, I bought ELO, an LP ELO with, um, with that uh, money. And that, that reminds me of her. I mean, this is something that we could talk about for 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 hours and and you're both very very passionate about what you do and you can see see that and just and hear it how how passionate music and uh, is is part of your lives um unfortunately we're going to have to draw this to a close it's uh, so sad uh, we may have to have a another session we're talking to the other podcasters this is just not long enough to to talk about the the subjects and certainly sort of maybe have a a follow up in maybe six months time once everyone has returned back to some kind of normality and people are mixing again and going and in your case going back to actually having choirs and, and singing in, in groups of people again. Maybe having yeah, but a, I got I've got somebody to bring in now to put a good projection behind me. Yeah, you can, you can bring people back in and, and then we can have another chat and just see how how things have changed, how people have changed and what sort of uh, mental damage has been caused by the, the, sorry, the last 12 months of lockdown and and whether, like I say, music has helped um, is is a big help in trying to to get people to on, on a mental road of recovery from, from all this. We have nods, so that's, that's good. Okay, well, well, thank you for joining us today. Uh, thank you, welcome. Ask, it's been... I will ask you to to leave us some um, content, uh, some links that people can find you at, so we can have that at the end. We'd like to thank our two guests, Sally Rose and Michelle Brace. Thank you to Marketplace for supporting the show. This is the the last one of this this current run, so I'm sure there will be another another series at some point in the near future, and you'll hear about them in social media as well. So until then, take care and we'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you for joining me, David Johnson, and my guest today. The Art of Covid Chat podcast is a DMJ imagery production, working with the Fenland Films Initiative and commissioned by Marketplace, a creative people and places project celebrating creative communities across Fenland and West Suffolk. Developed by Arts Council England and supported by National Lottery Funding. For more details, visit cppmarketplace.co.uk. I hope you'll follow our podcast and we'll bring you more chat and news soon. Thank you for listening. Thank you.